continue with the presentation from uh, Malaysia um, by uh, Naim. Yeah. Um, uh, and I'd like to say again, uh, thank you for joining us. You came a long way uh, for, for, uh, for a short trip and a visit. And it's extremely important that actually uh, uh, you from Malaysia um, will be able to take part in this uh, exercise. So, so uh, we look forward to your presentation. OK. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Sven. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today I would like to share with you um, on how uh, Malaysia, Malaysian government uh, promotes innovation through its public procurement by creating a good ecosystem or a conducive environment for local industry to uh, innovate. Uh, my presentation will uh, consist of uh, some quick facts on uh, Malaysia for, for those who are not familiar where Malaysia is. Uh, a brief introduction to Malaysia's public procurement, uh, in particular, uh, what are the policies of Malaysia's public procurement, the Malaysian government policies and direction in shaping uh, uh, innovation by its uh, public procurement. And I would also um, uh, share with you one of the uh, success stories or one of the good examples uh, on how uh, public procurement in Malaysia uh, can be a catalyst uh, for uh, innovation, uh, in particular for a uh, local industry. Uh, are the initiative involving public procurement the way forward and uh, conclusion? Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Mal Malaysia is uh, situated in the Southeast Asia, uh, bordered by Thailand in the north and Singapore and Indonesia in the, in the south and Philippines uh, in the east. Uh, a key economic indicator, um, as of 2013, uh, the Malaysian population is about uh, 29.9 million, uh, GDP of about 180 billion uh, at, uh, at the growth of 4.7%. Uh, the major export products uh, include uh, electrical and electronic products, refined petroleum products, LNG, chemicals and chemical products, uh, palm oil, uh, crude palm oil. As our topic today uh, is related to uh, innovation, it is good also for me to, to share with you our uh, gross expenditure for R&D, uh, which is, uh, uh, I can say, uh, relatively low, which is uh, low than 1%. It is at 0.84% of GDP. However, the government uh, is targeting to increase uh, the GDRD to 1% by next year. Uh, the Malaysia's public procurement uh, plays a crucial role uh, in the development agenda as it involves huge uh, expenditure. Uh, estimate indicates that about 12 to 15% uh, of uh, GDP uh, or 17% of total operating expenditure uh, of the government uh, procurement. Uh, in a monetary value, if you look at uh, year 2014, the government has uh, allocated about uh, 60.4 billion uh, per, per annum for operating uh, and uh, development uh, budget as well. Now, the public procurement is mainly decentralized where the uh, procurement exercise is delegated uh, to various uh, procurement uh, entities and also a uh, procurement body. And Ministry of Finance is the Federal Government Financial Authority. At the international level, uh, Malaysia is a member of uh, Government Procurement Expert Group, uh, APEC, and also a member of Procurement Working Group uh, under the United Nations Commission on International Trade Law, in citro. <coughs> uh, this uh, diagram uh, indicates uh, the overall uh, component of uh, Malaysia's public procurement. Uh, as you can see, uh, the, the, the component is quite complex as it has many principles, uh, policies, uh, strategies, objectives, and the procurement can, can also be conducted uh, under various uh, met methods. Uh, I will uh, focus on the government procurement uh, policy. Uh, in Malaysia, the government procurement policy is not only focusing at the economic aspect but uh, to use the public procurement as an instrument or as a strategic tool to achieve a socio-economic uh, development. 
So uh, this may be different approach uh, as compared to other country, but we are looking more towards on how to develop our uh, competitive advantage. The, the first policy is to promote the growth of local industries to the maximum use of local materials and resources. That is why we have uh, such uh, policy that to give a preference to local product and uh, services. Uh, Second, to encourage and support the participation of Bumiputra indigenous entrepreneurs to provide a level playing field because uh, it, when we talk about uh, business in Malaysia, uh, Bumiputra is still lagging behind. Um, the public procurement policy is also to develop and to uh, revitalize the capacity of local industry to the transfer of technology and expertise uh, in accordance to the capacity that uh, need by Malaysia. Uh, fought to stimulate and promote local industries and services such as freight and insurance. And by having all these uh, policy, um, Malaysia is aiming to accelerate the country's economic growth. Yeah? Uh, now look at what uh, we have when we talk about the synergy of public procurement and uh, innovation. Uh, indeed, uh, Malaysia has uh, realized the potential of uh, public procurement for innovation uh, and it can be, uh, can be seen uh, in various uh, documents in 10 Malaysia Plan, uh, a New Economic Model for Malaysia and National Renewable Policy and Action Plan. Uh, to, to briefly explain to you on each of the document, uh, 10 Malaysia Plan uh, outlines the uh, Malaysia Long Term De Development Plan from 2011 to 2015 uh, to, to achieve uh, high income development nation, inclusive and sustainable by uh, 2020. For a new economic model for Malaysia, uh, it is actually a, a framework. Uh, it is actually a framework to support the 10 Malaysia Plan uh, to propel Malaysia to become an advanced nation uh, through various economic transformation programs uh, as well as through many uh, strategic uh, reform uh, initiatives. Uh, National Renewable Energy Policy and Action Plan um, provides a long-term goal uh, for Malaysia to enhance uh, utilization of indigenous uh, renewable uh, source uh, to, for energy generation. And now look at, at uh, 10 Malaysia Plan. Uh, in the 10 Malaysia Plan, the 10 Malaysia Plan uh, clearly states that Malaysia is aiming to uh, becoming a high income, knowledge intensive and innovation led growth. Uh, to achieve this, the government um, is planning to utilize, to fully utilize the public procurement to invest in, in innovation, to create demand uh, for innovation in particular for local, uh, small, uh, medium entrepreneurs. Uh, by having this, a uh, government uh, can actually assist them to develop product in areas that are benefit to the nation and have larger commercial potential. Uh, Ten Malaysia Plan also highlights the uh, importance of public procurement as an enabler, yeah? as an enabler for uh, innovation. Uh, and uh, the government has uh, realized the potential of uh, budget spending uh, and uh, they also recognize uh, development expenditure uh, to, as one of the important instruments to, trans to support the transition to high income economy. Uh, still under 10 Malaysia Plan, um, in order to, to strengthen Malaysia's innovation system, four key dimensions have been uh, recommended uh, in this document, uh, whereby, whereby to shape a supportive ecosystem for innovation, creating innovation opportunities, putting in place innovation enablers in this context, uh, public, procur public uh, procurement and uh, funding uh, innovation. This is a statement uh, in the new economic model for Malaysia. The new economic model for Malaysia uh, reiterated the importance of public procurement to support local innovation. As you can see, much of the many of the statements are actually focusing at uh, supporting local uh, innovation. A specific policy to grant incentive to government-linked companies 
the private sector to purchase locally patented uh, innovative products and services would also further allow in innovators to establish marketing credentials and materially improve their idea. Yeah? This is again uh, trying to assist uh, the local industry uh, to, to, to become more competitive. Uh, as mentioned by uh, Professor Jacob about the forward the commitment procurement, uh, it has also been stated in our, our policy document uh, as one of the measures uh, to stimulate uh, innovation. Forward procurement allow innovative entrepreneurs uh, to better understand the needs of the uh, consumer. This is what we have under a new economic model for Malaysia. Yeah, still under the new economic model for Malaysia, the government is also uh, intends to, to, to have the government procurement policy to encourage product technology uh, integrator to use Malaysia as a test bed. This is uh, again uh, to show that the willingness of the government to uh, become early users, yeah? the early users uh, to assist the local uh, industry to come up with their uh, innovation. Uh, in this context, and, uh, and emphasize on energy saving devices, green technologies and sustainable manufacturing practices will in turn open new market segment and opportunities in the region. This I will relate to our initiative on uh, government uh, green procurement in the later part of my uh, presentation. Uh, for the new national uh, renewable energy policy and action plan, the government should use its public procurement power strategically to spur RE generation and industry growth. Uh, I would also relate this to uh, Professor uh, Jacob uh, presentation where we can use uh, public procurement as a strategic tool uh, to achieve our uh, national agenda. Okay, uh, this is one of the keys uh, where uh, we can see the influence of the government uh, spending power to influence the, uh, the, the local industry. Uh, in 1998, Malaysia became the first uh, country in the world to issue biometric uh, or electronic uh, passport. Yeah? It, is, it was in uh, 1998 and the biometric chip uh, was uh, developed by Malaysian company. Uh, the Malaysian government uh, took um, bold step uh, in endorsing the untested product at, that, at those days. You know? It was untested, but the government can see the, the potential of that uh, biometric chip. Uh, the government move uh, has catalyzed the development of the electronic uh, passport business because the, the government has committed certain amount of value to buy uh, that particular uh, biometric chip. Uh, in addition, in 2003, when International Civil Aviation Organization recommends the use of biometric chip, we have already uh, have the know-how and we have the technical capacity of providing uh, the uh, biometric chip in passport. And uh, by having that, the government uh, has, uh, has uh, provided a, a good platform to the company and the pilot company has become a global company providing electronic passport solution to more than uh, 12 countries. Okay, this is another, another initiative uh, which uh, has been uh, taken in place in the Malaysian uh, in, in the Malaysia now, where Malaysia has embarked on government green uh, procurement. Uh, government green procurement is uh, relatively new in Malaysia, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, it may uh, not uh, new concept in other countries, but in Malaysia it's relatively new because we only uh, embark on GDP way back in 2010. In the context of Malaysia, uh, what we meant by GDP is the acquisition of products, services and work in the public sector that takes into account environmental criteria and standard to conserve the natural environment resource which minimize and reduce the negative impact of human activities. Apart from this, apart from the environmental agenda, the main objective of having or implementing GDP is to boost our green technology uh, industry to promote green uh, innovation, uh, especially to the uh, local suppliers. 
uh, in 2010, the Malaysian government has committed uh, to give priority to environmental friendly products and services in government uh, procurement. This is this can actually can reflect the government needs. The government has sent a right signal to the local industry to provide with environmental friendly products and services to meet with the government uh, requirement. Uh, GDP has become one of the entry point projects under the Economic uh, Transformation uh, Program. Uh, this is to show you that uh, the government green procurement, as uh, I, I put a red mark there, uh, is one of the uh, main component in SCP policy support for Malaysia project. Yeah? SCP is, it means uh, sustainable consumption and production. Uh, so, uh, the project is uh, funded by European Union uh, to provide policy support to Malaysia to strengthen the policy and institutional framework uh, regarding sustainable consumption and production. And government green procurement uh, is one of the powerful economic incentives that can be used uh, to upscale uh, SCP to promote or to change behavior uh, amongst all the people in Malaysia. Uh, this project uh, uh, was started in February uh, 2012 and will be ended uh, in January 2016 involving uh, 2 million euro funding. Uh, several measures have been taken uh, to, to, to promote uh, government green procurement, to promote local uh, green innovation and the government uh, is targeting that 50% of certain products and services purchased by the public sector should be equalable by 2020. Uh, DGP is expected to stimulate green innovation and support local uh, industry, not only for domestic uh, purpose, but also to increase the company competitiveness, to create new and larger market for innovative, sustainable solutions, improve environmental performance for business, long-term saving, higher quality product, and healthier working condition. Uh, as a step uh, to promote uh, DGP in a more systematic and uh, efficient way, uh, the government uh, has prepared the Government Green Procurement a short-term action plan uh, covers for a period of one and a half years from July 2013 uh, to December uh, this year. Uh, the ultimate goal yeah, is uh, actually uh, to to boost green technology uh, industry uh, in Malaysia so that uh, Malaysia can uh, improve the environmental condition as well as the economic performance. Under, under the project, uh, six product groups services have been selected. The government has announced that government will only buy a green ICT, the government will only buy green paint, fiber cement, energy efficiency, efficiency indoor lighting, paper, and cleaning services. This again, government is uh, trying to send signals to the local supplier uh, so that uh, they can have a sufficient time. Uh, we are trying uh, to, to avoid influx of foreign product to come into Malaysia because we want our local supplier to get the benefit instead of the uh, foreign uh, supplier. Five public implementers have been uh, selected uh, which, which are Economic Planning Unit, Ministry of Energy, Green Technology and Water, Ministry of Education, Ministry of Health and Ministry of Affair. This is actually to get the, 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 the impact of government green procurement. For instance, when we do government green procurement at Ministry of Education, it will also give uh, some sort of awareness to the people in, 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 in the Ministry of Health process and also we do a landmark project, it will give uh, some uh, awareness to the people who get involved in the project. At the re regional uh, level, um, Malaysia uh, has participated uh, also in a number of workshops uh, with, um, uh, with uh, a number of countries, uh, Thailand, uh, Indonesia, Philippines, uh, jointly organized by German International Corporation, United Nations, Environmental Program, uh, etc. 
um, the workshops uh, are aiming at sharing experience, lesson learned, exchanging information on the good practice of GTP and equilibrium in the region. Because we are going to have our ASEAN Economic Community in 2015. Uh, for us, uh, these uh, uh, measures is very important uh, so that we can avoid the trade barriers. Uh, we, we can also uh, uh, try to reduce the uh, consumer confusion about green products and uh, services if there are too many uh, green labels in the region. Uh, in Bangkok uh, last month, uh, we are trying uh, to also to harmonize our uh, eco uh, labeling uh, so that we can uh, recognize uh, each other uh, to, to accept uh, the, the, the mutual recognition agreement by, uh, within the, the uh, ASEAN region. ASEAN region. Uh, the way forward, uh, we are in the midst of preparing uh, our GDP long-term action plan, 10-year plan. Uh, the, the plan will be uh, launched uh, next year and we are planning to integrate social aspects, social public procurement and public procurement promoting innovation into the GDP long-term uh, action plan. And I think this, this workshop uh, can uh, provide uh, better uh, avenue for us to, to strengthen our policy development. As a conclusion, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, as you can see, public procurement has emerged as a powerful instrument to spur innovation. I, I'm not pretty sure whether powerful instrument or powerful uh, economic uh, practices, maybe April, yeah, economic practices to spur uh, innovation. I have, a, I have a question to that. Okay. <laughs> Then the public procurement for innovation is in line with nation's aspiration and can be a significant source of support for the local industries. The nation government has shown its strong commitment towards implementing public procurement for uh, innovation, uh, in particular uh, to strengthen our uh, local industry. Regional cooperation is in line with uh, ASEAN economic uh, community. Uh, the, the, the work uh, have been the works has have been uh, started and we hope we can also uh, strengthen our uh, ties with our ASEAN counterpart. Mm -hmm. And uh, finally, uh, in the context of Malaysia, public procurement uh, can be uh, enablers, uh, can can be also a good instrument for Malaysia to achieve an inclusive and sustainable high income nation by uh, twenty twenty. Yeah, that's all my presentation. Uh, I conclude my presentation and uh, looking forward to have your Q&A. Thank you very much. Thank you, Naim. Um, this is a very interesting uh, story about um, uh, how you do this and attempt to do this in, in Malaysia. Um, we have time for uh, a quick discussion and questions because uh, I assume that there are people around here that would like to raise questions. Uh, please talk to me at the side of. Well, thank you very much for the very good overview on the subject procurement in uh, Malaysia. Uh, uh, Sven and myself, we had the opportunity of uh, spending one week in Malaysia during the CUNET project uh, last year, was our more or less around this time of the year mm -hmm. uh, because then we were in charge of doing the report also together with, with Grace from SPI uh, on the innovation systems in, in Malaysia and looking at different framework conditions for innovation and uh, we are just finalizing the report that will be published very soon and there we had basically interaction with uh, your ministries of science and technology and the different agencies dealing with the innovation, different research institutes, uh, universities, also the private sector. And I have to say, I, we were very impressed with the development of Malaysia. And with all the, I think Malaysia is doing a very good job in all the, the planning. So it has a, a lot of uh, different types of institutions and all the planning is uh, being uh, very well done. So what, probably what's still missing a little bit is then to pass from the planning to the implementation stage and the interaction also among different types of organizations. But all that you presented also, I think, also states even more the, the impression we got in terms of the excellent planning that, that Malaysia is doing. In terms of uh, interactions with Europe, uh, could you uh, elaborate a bit on uh, if 
you had uh, in uh, your thematics any interactions with the European organizations? Yes, yeah, we have, we do have our collaboration with uh, European Union. The Sustainable Consumption and Production uh, Project is uh, f funded by uh, EU, mm -hmm. and the main objective is actually to uh, assist us to strengthen our policy and institutional framework. Uh, maybe we have a, a good policy statements, but due to lack of policy coherence, a lack of uh, good institutional framework, we cannot translate the policy statements uh, into uh, practices. Uh, so what we are doing right now is uh, trying to prepare uh, or to develop uh, action plan, uh, a holistic action plan uh, that can be uh, can uh, be practically uh, translated into action. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> I could remember that. that. Um, uh, in many respects, uh, uh, maybe two or three questions. Is a powerful tool? Do you mean a potentially powerful tool, or do you have already have indications that public procurement innovation is indeed a powerful tool? When you have this electronic passport or uh, system that was impressive, but but are there indications? Do you have evidence that it? That, that it really makes a difference, or it's, it's a potentially powerful, powerful tool. And the other question that, that we discussed over coffee break, uh, when it came to China, they had also a policy, um, a strategic policy, to push indigenous innovation, you know, local entrepreneurs and innovators, of local, national, indigenous. And you, I mean, you made it very clear. Public procurement for you is an economic policy tool to spur the economy of financial period. All the societal challenges and stuff and all of that is nice as well uh, as a side, but it is an economic policy. Therefore, you have to have a strong element of discrimination in your procurement policy in order to make sure that the benefit goes to your local company. So I just, I mean, that, that's legitimate. I'm not saying, I'm not, you know, criticizing this because Germany has done this for 100 years uh, in the 19th cent century. Uh, it was big, you know, all kinds of policies to protect infant industries. So I'm not saying, how dare you? Just saying, <laughs> at all, of course not. But but I'm just saying, uh, how do you actually make sure it happens that way? And what are the kinds of maybe potentially international tensions that you might do? You see any tensions with the uh, WTO or are there any tensions? And I mean, how do you do it? Are there any tensions? But I was really impressed. Thank you very much. I will respond to the first one. The powerful tool. Yes. Economic uh, powerful tool. We say that because uh, we have uh, put uh, uh, in place our affirmative uh, procurement policy to, to give the preference to local company uh, and also to indigenous uh, uh, people uh, we, since our independence. And we can see that the uh, affirmative policy uh, really works. The affirmative policy can uh, really uh, provide a level playing field uh, to enhance or to to, to, to reduce the, the gap between the indigenous people and uh, and the, the, the business uh, at, at large. That is why we, we say that the government procurement is our uh, powerful economic tool and by looking at the spending uh, power, we spend about 12 to 15 percent. If, if Let's say look at the, the, op uh, the operating budget, we spend about 17 percent of our annual budget uh, for uh, procurement. So, and the, the government consume the, the, the common item, paper for instance, that can be produced by our, our local industry. So by giving this uh, preference to our local industry, we are pretty confident that uh, we can assist them. That is why we can say that it, is, it was even a uh, powerful economic uh, incentive in the Malaysia context. For, for the second uh, question, uh, on the strategic tools. Uh, this is also re uh, related to the first um, uh, question uh, whereby we made use of our public procurement to also achieve our socio-economic uh, uh, agenda. We don't only look at um, uh, monetary terms. That is why for indigenous uh, people, we give them 10% price preference. The government willing to pay higher for 
or in order to to support the uh, indigenous uh, is Malaysia a member of the WTO? Yes, Malaysia is a member of WTO. Also, the procurement part of it because I, I would be very surprised. Uh, but but um, oh. Oh, sorry. Um, Malaysia is a member of WTO, but uh, certain uh, terms under WTO uh, is is not agreed yeah. by, by by Malaysia, especially. Uh, when we talk about uh, public procurement. That is why uh, when we uh, are trying to work on a Trans-Pacific uh, Agreement uh, last uh, two years, uh, when it's come into public procurement, we don't agree much on that terms. And, uh, yeah. that, 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 I think, uh, one of the uh, tension. Because for us, we are not, uh, not uh, protected our public procurement. But we want to fully utilize of our public procurement to achieve our national agenda. Um, I ask you also a question um, because you raised um, uh, <coughs> the, um, uh, the development of the ASEAN economic community that will be, you know, have a further step, so to speak, in 2015, uh, which, which. Um, principle at least should uh, have an impact on this and also on let's say innovation patterns and performance and the framework conditions for innovation. So could you expand a little bit on that, on how you see that development uh, having an impact on, 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 on this area and the practices? Um, are there for example already now, uh, and you mentioned a little bit about it, but already now uh, clear signs that, um, that uh, for example, uh, in the ASEAN system, that there will be, um, let's say, uh, um, developed uh, 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 more developed uh, policy cooperation, for example, across the countries, uh, in joint bodies, for example, mm -hmm. so that you can have even transnational uh, procurement networks, uh, for example, that will be eased in more easily um, uh, in this context. So uh, the implications of this further development will be interesting to, to hear more about. Yeah. Uh, Malaysia is very uh, positively uh, looking forward when the ASEAN economic uh, community uh, will be established uh, next year. Yeah. Because we can uh, see the, uh, the potential of, uh, of our local industry to expand their market. That is why we have to develop their, uh, their, their capacity. We have our, our own uh, competitive advantage, which we can focus and we, we hope that we can also uh, have the benefit by having this uh, AEC 2015. But anyway, uh, many things need to be done. Uh, it, especially in terms of collaboration, so that uh, each country involved uh, can also get the benefit by having the win-win uh, situation uh, scenario. Yeah. We will, uh, I think we will return to this uh, also later in the discussion. But, uh, I'll I'll just, yeah, adding of that, thank you actually. It was quite interesting to know how the Malaysia has been within the ASEAN region, uh, just working in that region. Um, like just AEC 2015 coming within a year time and there are a lot of variations within the countries uh, there are certain countries which is far behind mm -hmm. in the policy to develop even and there are certain countries which is quite ahead so how do you think uh, as working in now in the policy sectors that uh, all these 10 countries are together the country like Cambodia, Laos uh, uh, Myanmar even far behind that having any sort of special policies on many things, I think, missing there. And so, what do you think you bring like that, the trans nations or trans boundary issues, also in the policy procurement or other things can help? Yeah. I, I, I think when we talk about AEC 2015, we have uh, to strengthen our uh, regional collaboration, you know, because each country will have their, 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 their own uh, uh, strength. So we are trying to leverage their strength, and they are also trying to leverage our strength, uh, so that uh, the the country within the region uh, can actually uh, have the benefit of having such a collaboration. 
but uh, in terms of mechanism, I'm not pretty sure on, on how we are going to enhance this uh, cooperation. But uh, in particular, I guess uh, the, the focus is more uh, towards our uh, trade uh, incentive uh, providing by the uh, 